My name is Aaron Solomons and I want to talk about deep equalization and our thoughts on this one. Now the strategy for deep equalization is part of a comprehensive strategy for training for depth. It's not the solution for depth in itself. So if any of you are looking for miracles here, um, I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with an awful lot more than this one. However, it is an essential part of a whole strategy of approaching depth. Uh, so I'm going to give you my thoughts on the subject. Now, let's begin with something else. Let's begin with what is commonly in practice today, and that's the Fatak Frenzel mouthfeel. An awful lot of people struggle with the Fatak Frenzel mouthfeel because, frankly, there's a hell of a lot to think about, actually far too much to think about, particularly at the beginning. They're having to worry about the position of their soft palate being in neutral and their glottis being shut, and then they have to worry about their cheek fill and how much it's diminishing, and, 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 and when do I top up, how do I top up, etc. Uh, this has led to an epidemic of lung squeeze. Uh, people are filling up far too late. People are topping up far too late and far too violently. And a lot of it is improper mastery of the fatok frenzel mouthfeel itself. Uh, an awful lot of people discover that there are a few things that they need to polish, but they discover it too late after they've got a lung squeeze. So the whole thing here was to try and simplify. It is so simple, our technique, that a lot of people are going to say, can't possibly work. Well, give it a shot, because actually it has worked with some very elite divers, and it's worked superbly well. Okay, so let me go on uh, bashing the Fatak Frenzel uh, technique for a moment. The main point that a lot of people struggle with, as I say, is the shifting of consciousness between too many things. Soft palate, glottis, cheeks, tongue, etc., etc., etc. And this is too much. The moment we remove the tongue from the picture and, uh, to a large extent, uh, eliminate leaks back into the chest, then uh, the whole thing becomes vastly simplified. That's one of the advantages of the technique that I'm going to demonstrate for you. Another thing is this. I personally am absolutely allergic to alarms. And people who are dependent on alarms are very often suffer the consequences. There's been more than one world record that has been lost through a dependency on alarms at depth to refill. Uh, this is a self-monitoring technique and it doesn't require rocket science uh, to do it and go on doing it without use of instruments that can go wrong or you don't set them right or uh, you forget to set them. Nobody, of course, ever forgets anything, least of all me. Um, so there you go. All we need to do right now is try and teach you yeah, how to do this technique. Now, a word. This technique is terribly simple, but uh, in some ways hard to teach. And that's why I hesitated a lot before bringing out this video. Because in my estimation, maybe only 10 or 15% of you will be able to get it from a video. Be able to get the technique. You may or may not. I don't want to, to uh, go into prediction too much. Maybe I will be surprised about this. Uh, but it's not uh, immediately easy to learn it from a video. It's much better if you have somebody watching you, correcting, etc., etc. So, anyway, the first step in this is to do everything in front of the mirror. You fall in love with the mirror, you know, it's great fun. Um, 
and be able to self-monitor yourself in front of the video. Okay, so let's get on to the explanation of how we do this from the beginning. First of all, we fill the cheeks The next thing is that we are using the cheeks as the main mechanism for equalization here. Uh, it's quite easy to understand. But before I do that, let me just uh, put in a few words of caution. The teeth must not be touching. The jaw must be dropped and brought forward a little bit. That opens the eustachian tubes and at the same time opens the soft palate. And all we need then is a little bit of pressure applied from the cheeks themselves. It's rather like we think that we've got a ball of air in the mouth and by squeezing that ball with our cheeks we're trying to push it out against our closed lips. Now, first of all I'll show you what should happen, what you should see, and then we'll try and demonstrate to you what you shouldn't see with this. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to do four or five equalizations and just watch and see how little you actually see of movement around the mouth. That was five equalizations. It's very quick, very gentle, very, very efficient. Now, it is not a single continuous equalization. It's little bits of pressure applied with the cheeks to the ball of air in your mouth. Okay, one more demonstration before we leave this. That was again five equalizations. And you shouldn't have seen a lot of movement in the area of the mouth. Not round here, and no big collapse. Now, what you shouldn't see is a lot of movement around the mouth, either a, a smiley or a collapse of the mouth. So, this is what you shouldn't see. Anything like that, you haven't got it. Now, a word about monitoring this. You may find that the first equalization works, and then when you're doing consecutive equalizations on the same breath hold, if you like, it doesn't work. Um, this is because your ears are telling you, hey guy, you're in a room with one atmosphere pressure, unless you're in a submarine or an aircraft, um, and so you don't really need to equalize your ears again. So in that case, just to check that, that your, it's your ears not being lazy and saying to you, hey, I don't need to equalize again, I'm not going to. Uh, the way to check that is equalize, pause, let go of the breath hold, do it again. If you equalize, pause, do it again. Equalize, pause, do it again. If that works for you, you've got it. Now the next step is, how do we check this out in the water? We check it out in the water on empty lungs, and I mean totally empty, residual volume. Not FRC guys, no cheating, because if you cheat on this, you're only cheating yourselves. I mean, Okay, so to reiterate, uh, it's incredibly important we bear in mind safety precautions for this. The safety precautions, as I said, first of all, no weights on the body. Secondly, head down only. If you can keep your feet, which are up, and your head down, if you can keep your feet on the line or the pole, even better. Uh, we pull ourselves down, we pull ourselves up, we never let go with our hands.
either of the rope or the pole, whichever it happens to be. Another thing here, we go down slowly and we're feeling all the time, we're not in our minds thinking, I must get to the bottom, I must get to the bottom. What we're doing is we're trying to feel what's happening in our cheeks and what's happening in our ears. That's all. That's the whole story right there. There are all kinds of exercises that we do in the pool apart from that. That's just the beginning exercise. Uh, there are many, many, many versions of this that are adapted to the pool and that have been working really well. If you have access to deeper water, uh, the sea, a quarry, whatever it is, uh, that's an incredible uh, blessing and an incredible asset and I do recommend it even if it's miserably cold and miserably dark. We've had elite divers training with this system and uh, this is a system that works incredibly well. The first part of the system, as I say, is empty lung diving. Uh, a good number for this is somewhere between 16 and 20 meters, eventually after several weeks. Uh, one person who is a very elite diver got to 30 meters in a dark Polish quarry, 30 meters deep where the water temperature was two degrees. So when he got to Dahab and elsewhere, he found that uh, he had a very easy ride when it came to equalization. So it's a system that actually works very well. One of the missing elements in the system is, of course, time. If you're doing a simulated dive to 90 meters, which would be somewhere in the region of somewhere between 10 and 15 meters on empty lungs, depending on what kind of uh, uh, RV you've got, whether it's 20% or 25%, um, it's only going to take you a few seconds, maybe 40 seconds at the most. Now, a dive to... Uh, uh, 90 meters uh, is going to take you at least uh, 180 seconds, which is three minutes by my calculations if my mathematics are up to it. So there's a big difference here. What we do do to make sure that this thing is smooth, rapid, etc., is afterwards we start working on drops. That's at the beginning of uh, deep water training. Uh, this is not the whole system that I'm giving you. There's an all, it's just a, a small part of it. There's obviously an awful lot of physical training that is necessary. There's diet, there's all kinds of stuff that uh, we haven't mentioned, uh, lactic training, all sorts of stuff that uh, are not being addressed in this. Anyway, uh, this is the uh, really the beginning of uh, the basis of the whole thing. It begins with the equalization, begins with deep water training, which is the first element of deep water training. Sorry, it begins with shallow water training on uh, empty lung. And uh, here's another thing that's another benefit of empty lung training is we do away with pressure triggers. Pressure triggers are where somebody stops on the line without looking at a watch, without looking at marks of the line, every time at exactly the same place. This is rather like uh, Tai Chi when somebody feels a hand coming towards them. Now there's a certain point where that begins to feel not nice and the body tends to tense up. This is what the pressure is doing to you guys. And subconsciously, without even being a conscious thing, you will tense up at that point. The body says alarm, either it's from too long a breath hold or I'm not used to that pressure. Yeah, the body says stop. Now, we don't know exactly how the, this mechanism works. It's incredibly precise. I've seen people go down to uh, 80 some odd meters and they stop every time within 15 centimeters at the same place. But we do know how to cure that.
let's go back to the boards, go back to the anti-lung training, which gets you, you can't do many dives in a day to 80 or 90 meters, but you can do an awful lot of dives in a day on empty lungs. And that gets the body used to the idea that it can feel secure at this, there's no alarm, and it gets used to the thing and says, okay, we'll do that again, yeah, and you're off. So, uh, again, safety above all, reiterate the points of never push it, never go down fast, don't go down with a weight belt, always have a buddy, least bit of pain or even pressure in the chest, don't go down further, come back. And don't make the next dive deeper. Uh, so that's the uh, main point of this one. There will be other talks on other aspects of uh, uh, deep water training. Uh, an awful lot of which is done uh, dry or uh, during the winter in uh, shallow water. So uh, all I would like to do is wish you terrific luck with this one and I hope it works out for you and don't be scared to let me know your opinions on it. It's so simple that uh, you're going to say, is that all? But give it a shot, see if it works for you. Okay, a few more words about what we offer in the line of help for this. One is I offer remote coaching. Uh, so if you have access to Skype or Facebook, uh, messenger with video etc um, we can work together uh, the first part is of course checking your movements uh, dry the next thing is that we have conversations where I ask you what happened in the last thing and I ask you specific questions and then in the next training you try to remember the questions and answer them and through backwards and forwards we stand a very good chance of getting it right. Uh, too often deep water training or training for the summer when people hope to do depth is doing monumental statics on full lungs which I think is virtually worthless. Uh, long dynamics which uh, do have a point but uh, they're not going to get you there by themselves because the really important things that can, are the things that can stop you. Equalization can stop you. Inurement to pressure can stop you. So we offer, as I say, remote coaching. The other thing we offer is come and train with us. Uh, it's very easy to do. You get to us through freedivers.net and uh, there you'll find uh, our phone numbers, our emails, and uh, you just shoot me off an email and we can arrange either Skype meetings or we can arrange to uh, have you visit us here, which is, of course, the best solution of the lot. We, I also travel. So if you have a group that are interested in doing it and even interested in doing it in a dive pit, wherever you are, um, that's a swimming pool that has more than four, me uh, four meters or more, uh, I will travel and uh, it's probably going to work out for you a lot cheaper than anything else. So all this is by chat between us. So there you are, freedivers.net and hope to see you there.